Hello, my name is Brandon and welcome to the next video in my series on basic statistics. If you are new to the channel, welcome, please subscribe. If you are a returning viewer, it is great to have you back. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Share it with classmates, colleagues, or friends, or anyone else you might want to torture. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So this video is the next in our series on simple linear regression. And specifically, it is about confidence interval bands. And you've probably seen these at some point, but you may not be quite sure what it, what it means or where it comes from. What we're gonna try to do is obviously explain what those are, demystify them a bit, tell you about what it means, and actually how you can calculate them because it's not too bad in simple linear regression. Let's go ahead and talk about confidence interval bands in regression. So this video is brought to you by the great people at The Great Courses Plus. So as I always say, you are here watching this video because you either need to or want to learn something new. So there are a few better places to learn anything than The Great Courses Plus, where there's access to over 10,000 video lectures on everything from math to cooking to photography and philosophy and literature and everything else. So please follow the link in the description below where you can get a free trial for The Great Courses Plus, and of course support my channel and The Great Courses Plus as well. Let's go ahead and talk about confidence interval bands in regression. So here is the data we have been using in the previous videos in this series. I'm not gonna go into it in depth, but basically we're looking at how to model the bill amount in a restaurant here on the x-axis, which is our independent variable, and then the tip amount that the server gets um, based on that bill. So here in the US, it's a standard practice to tip a waiter or waitress in a fairly nice restaurant, you know, based on the quality of service and the amount of the bill. So here in the dependent variable on the y-axis, we have the tip amount in dollars, and you can see the data over here on the right. So here is our regression model and our regression uh, equation and line. So our regression line is y equals 0.1462x minus, that's our slope of course, minus 0.8188. There's a little bit of difference in these two regression um, equations. That's just due to some intermediate rounding in the algorithms of different software packages, but it's basically the same thing. It's only different you know, to like the third or fourth decimal place. So don't worry about the difference. So that is our regression line and our regression equation. Our slope is 0.1462. You can see that over on the right. Our centroid, which is the mean of each variable, is 74 for bill amount and $10 for tip amount. That's sort of the center of our data. And we basically interpret that as meaning that every dollar increase in the meal bill would expect, you could expect or predict an increase in the tip by 15 uh, cents. Again, that's just sort of basic, you know, sort of rule. Um, here, but again, remember that that's sort of a layperson interpretation of this regression. There's actually more to it. That's what we're going to get into, but that's how you can sort of on a surface level interpret the model. So as I said in the last video, there are estimators everywhere in statistics period, but also in regression, of course. So we have the, reg the estimator for the slope, an estimator for the intercept. We have the estimator of the centroid, which is sort of the center of the data. What we're looking at in this video is the estimator for the mean value, that's y hat star, for any value of x that we're looking at. Okay, so let's put that into like not math terms. What we're talking about, let's say that you're a waiter or a waitress at a restaurant and you know you have several bills that are around $50. Over many, many, you know, shifts or nights or whatever else, what would you expect the mean tip to be for a meal that costs $50? What's the mean tip value? And that's what we mean by Y hat star. So that would be the mean tip value, the X star would be $50. And then the individual values, which we'll talk about in the next video. So we're looking at in this video, confidence interval, and the next video is prediction interval. So we'll say this several times in this video, that confidence interval is about the mean value of Y for a value of X, whereas the prediction interval is for an individual value of y for a value of x. Two different things, and it's really hard to, s to sometimes keep them apart, but one's mean value, one's individual value. We're looking at the mean value confidence interval. 
And there are many other estimators about variance and everything else um, in regression. Lots of intervals in regression. So let's talk about, uh, let's kind of set the stage here. Tip me, please. So let's say that you're the server who has been keeping data about the meals and tip amounts. So you're like the super data science um, server at a restaurant, which I know some people do, by the way, but that's what I would do if I were doing it, of course. So you're keeping data. So a table then has a meal that costs $64. So based on the model that we've developed or been using, what dollar amount might the server expect for a tip? So you put the bill down on the table, it says $64. And then you're waiting for them to fill out the receipt or whatever else. And you're thinking in your head, what might I expect for a tip of $64? So luckily using simple linear regression, we can actually kind of figure that out or estimate that out. So we use our regression equation that we had before. We stick in for total bill, a value of $64 for the meal. And then our regression equation gives us back $8 and about 54 cents. So based on this regression model, the, the, the server would come back to the table and kind of expect on the receipt or in cash, whatever it might be, a tip of about eight and a half dollars, eight dollars and fifty cents, based on the, the data that we have. So there it is. Now there are some caveats, and this is kind of a very simple way of looking at it, but this is, you know, again, we're looking at a high level. This is a good place to start. So let's complicate it a bit. Now you gotta remember that the regression model is based off a sample, and therefore the statistics generated are estimates. Another server would almost certainly have different data, or the same server, like on the next shift or next day, would probably get different data, and therefore a different model that would be generated. So regression is not deterministic, and students kind of make this assumption all the time, like, oh, I generated a regression model, my regression equation is this, my slope is this, my intercept is this, I'm gonna plug in something, I'm gonna put in something for the independent variable, and it'll spit out a value for the dependent variable, and that's my regression. It's not really that simple. So regression is not deterministic. So for a meal that costs $64, a tip of $8.54 is just one of many possible tips. So we can ask ourselves this, what is the average tip for a meal of $64? What is the mean tip? for a meal of $64. So if you run the restaurant, this is something you could really you know, figure out. You could take all the receipts and kind of like round them up or down to the nearest dollar and then figure out what the average tip is over many, 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 many days. So to answer this question, we'll go back to sampling distributions. We can't know an exact average or, or mean tip. So we will generate a confidence interval for the mean tip amount when the bill is $64. So a confidence interval for the mean tip when the bill is $64. And the confidence interval is tied to that value, in this case of bill, or the X value, okay? They are related. So we're looking at $64 in this case, and we'll expand it out to other dollar amounts as we go. So again, note, it is important to realize that the confidence interval is for the mean tip amount not an individual tip amount. So you had to be careful in interpreting everything, what it actually means. Now we will get to individual tip amounts or individual values in the next video. That's prediction intervals. But in confidence intervals, it's a confidence interval for the mean tip amount. Okay, so it's gonna get in some of the math and equations, so don't freak out, it's just you know a little bit of algebra here and there. The notation's kinda of weird. I'm gonna to try to make the notation as simple as possible using everyday language, but to be precise, you know, I had to tell you about the, the notation. Now about the notation, no one agrees on the notation. So the notation I use is something I'm familiar with. You might go to a different stats book and it'd be completely different. Um, unfortunately, authors and you know practitioners disagree on the notation. Nothing I can do about that. So I'll use the notation I'm familiar with and try to explain and what it is as I go. All right, so here is our regression line on our graph. Now here is our value of $64. So we have a bill of $64 that we're gonna in input into this model. Now, what do these dots represent? Well, 
These dots represent possible mean tip amounts. So we could take a sample and get one dot for the mean tip amount for $64. We could take another sample, get a different mean tip amount for $64, and so on and so forth. So what we have is actually an interval for the mean tip amount. So think about this distribution like sitting up on the axis or up on the regression line pointing towards you out of the screen. So we actually have a distribution of mean tip amounts for $64. So what about these 95% confidence interval bands we sometimes see? So you've probably seen something like this, whether it's in, you know, SPSS or Jump or whatever stat software package you are using, R or Python, whatever else it might be. So you hit some button or checkbox in the regression output um, that says confidence intervals. Then you hit the button for OK and you get this. Well, what does this mean? That's the question we're trying to get at is what does this thing actually mean? So here we have this tip, this bill amount of $64 here on the bottom. So it kind of lines up with this black dot right above it. And that's actually an observation. So in our data, we had this observation. We had a tip amount that was like $11 and something. That is our black dot above the 64. So what we have is this confidence interval band for the mean value. So if you look at this like blue purple line, that is the width of our confidence interval when the bill is $64. So we have this sort of distribution over here in this confidence interval, 95% um, interval. So think about the curve, again, sitting upright, pointing out of the screen towards you. I can't really do three dimensions, but pick up the point of the distribution and pull it towards you so it's sitting upright towards your face, wherever you're watching this. So at a meal amount of $64, there's actually a distribution of mean tip amounts. And that's what this interval actually means. So we're gonna calculate the 95% confidence interval. That is the dark line that spans this shaded band. So you can see the width of this interval. We're actually gonna calculate that and figure out where it comes from, what it means, and so forth. So that's what we're gonna to try to find out. So what is this value here on the bottom of the interval? What is this value here on the top of the interval? Okay, so the 95% confidence interval for a Y when we have an X. In this, case, it's, in this case, it's $64. I'm playing a little bit of a trick on you because I've already done this in software. So here is what we get when we do this in a software package. So we have our bill amounts in one column. We have our tip amounts in the next column. And then we have our 95% confidence interval lower boundary. And then our 95% confidence interval upper boundary for the mean tip amount at that bill. So in this case, $64. Now the way to interpret this, let's look at another one. Let's look at the top one here. Uh, let's not look at the top one, it's kind of weird. Let's go to the bottom one. Look at the bill of $51, okay? We had a tip of $5. Now what we're asking here in the, in the, in the CI lower and upper is a 95% confidence interval for the mean tip amount when the bill is $51. So look at the two values here on the right for $51 bill amount. What we are saying is that we are 95% confident the mean tip amount of all bills that are $51 on the, in the population, we are 95% confident that the mean tip amount for a bill of $51 falls within the range of $2.51 or 52 cents and $10.75. So we're 95% confident that the actual in the population mean tip amount for a bill of $51 falls within that interval. We're trying to find out what it is for $64. This video is brought to you by The Great Courses Plus, where you can get unlimited access to over 10,000 different video lectures taught by award-winning professors from the Ivy League and other top schools around the world. You can learn about anything that interests you, science, literature, and yes, statistics, like this lecture from Professor Michael Starbird called Real Estate, Accounting for Value, from his course, Meaning from Data, Statistics Made Clear. And right now, The Great Courses Plus is offering my viewers a free trial and is also now optimized for Australia and the UK. So go to thegreatcoursesplus.com slash Brandon Foltz, my name, 
to have access to the 10,000 video lecture library or click on the link in the description below. Okay, so that was a long video on the confidence interval band in simple linear regression. But unfortunately, it's just one of those things that you really have to explain a few different you know, things in and then put it all together at the end. I like to show things visually, so that takes a little bit, a little bit of time. So I apologize for the length of this video, but I'm hoping that it really helped explain where everything comes from, what it all means, why things look the way they do, why things are shaped the way they do, and then obviously point out that when you do it by hand, if you do it correctly, you'll get the exact same thing that the computer does. So I hope you found this video helpful and even may maybe more so insightful. And I look forward to seeing you again in our next video. Take care.